Okay. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Thief SCOMI webinar. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, about SCOMI capacity building and we have a cool uh, slideshow presentation to share with you, which I will share in a second. Wait. Mm. Okay. And it is loading and hopefully it will be presenting soon. Um, so uh, I'm today talking a bit about, uh, oh, wait, yeah, here, uh, capacity building, uh, what and why. Uh, so we usually say uh, capacity building like this buzzword in IFMSA that everyone uses and uh, it looks so cool uh, to talk about capacity building, but what does capacity building uh, mean? And uh, basically, I, you know, sh I'm sharing you the, uh, with you here uh, two pictures which I think really showcase uh, what uh, is capacity building uh, and in terms of what IFMSA does. And capacity building is about uh, sharing the knowledge uh, challenging uh, experiences uh, and empowering. Uh, we do that uh, in many ways uh, by doing workshops, by conducting uh, training sessions, uh, but mostly it, it is about getting uh, a person that is motivated to do something and empowering them with uh, some knowledge and getting something uh, um, discussing some co content, then we develop some skills and those can be uh, in advocacy and facilitation skills. We'll see uh, uh, after this uh, part of the webinar, uh, how can that be done? And afterwards, uh, it is uh, about making sure these people uh, leave a room with a certain kind of attitude to want to make a change. Uh, and I think that in a very informal way, uh, this is what capacity building is and uh, also why we do it. Uh, and we want uh, members in IFMSA to uh, connect with us. And uh, we want to say that we represent 1.3 million medical students worldwide, but also that we create a network of 1.3 million medical students worldwide that all are advocates for global health and all stand for the principles that our federation stands for. And the way that we do that is through capacity building. Uh, you get into a session room and you get enlightened and empowered by all these different discussions uh, around and how can they um, shape you to go back home and do something about these things that you heard. And uh, I think that is uh, why we do what we do. Uh, and it is about exactly doing this um, empowerment uh, of members throughout the Federation so that we can, in fact, turn this global action uh, into some local change. Uh, I think uh, that's it. As I said, uh, capacity building don't be uh, too stuck on the idea of, oh, capacity building are just those trainings that we do before the General Assembly or the regional meeting of uh, two or three day, day training, the TNT, the TMED, and all those big acronyms. Uh, a capacity building can be a session of one or two, three hours. Uh, for example, if you do a public speaking workshop of one or two hours and you, um, and you do it and you actually take part of, of it, you will see that your public speaking skills have improved, even, even if it's just like 10%. Uh, and also throughout your involvement. Uh, we have a background usually in one or another standing committee, but we, we realize that our uh, actual knowledge, our actual uh, need for taking action, the positions that we have throughout the days, are much more than just the standing committee that we've been working on. And we actually now want to speak up about other issues from other standing committees or uh, other uh, kinds of stuff. We usually don't go on workshops about organizing activities, but we become kind of comfortable doing that. 
uh, and that's part of the capacity building. So it can be a session, it can be a training, or it can be throughout your involvement uh, in student representation uh, in general. Um, it is up to you to decide. Uh, as this is a SCOMI webinar, we will give you some uh, cool ideas on this, how this can be applicable in SCOMI in medical education. And I'll give the word uh, to Matilda now, the SCOMI development assistant. Thank you, Katarina. Hello, guys. I hope you are excited uh, and looking forward to becoming team trainers, or if you are already one to further polish your existing skills. And speaking of involvement, uh, you are probably asking where we wandered since the since first of October and part in this moment. And I'm very happy to let you know that we have new team trainers coming from Brazil, Morocco. Tunisia, Pakistan, Egypt, and lastly, Hong Kong, as the pre-APRM and APRM regional meeting just finished. Uh, moreover, we have new AMET uh, advocates and passionate about changing the medical education systems coming from Oman and Slovenia. We um, were conducting AMET workshops during the uh, pre-EMR regional meeting and pre-March uh, meeting. Uh, furthermore, uh, can you uh, click back, Katarina, please? Thank you. Uh, what is with so many pins? Well, according to the team and trainer status, we have uh, active trainers coming from all of the regions. And um, I, maybe you are wondering which is the region which, with the most team trainers, as uh, this was one of the questions from the quiz. So now we'll see how many there are. Uh, can you please click? We have uh, between 20 and 30 in Africa, between 30 and 40 from Americas, between 10 and 20 from Asia Pacific, 60, 70 from Europe, and the winner is ZMR with 90 or 100 active team trainers. This team trainer status is a form that is really important to be filled in if you are still active in medical education because it helps us approach you or check your availability for further FMSA events. It will be shared again soon, so please stay tuned. But what is happening with the new um, workshop that we just implemented one year ago? There's still been some confusion regarding the difference between a TMAT and an AMAT workshop. And I just outlined here the main differences between them. So I hope after this webinar, this information will be clearer for all of you. TMAT graduates trainers, AMAT doesn't which is very simple because for um, a TMAT, you'll have to have certain follow-up and for AMAT, you just become skilled in advocacy, in uh, tips on how to change your current system or how to take action action in your, um, in your school or animal or country and so on. The minimum, the minimum attendance when you attend the workshop is different between the two of them is 85% for a TMAT and 50 for an AMAT. Also, the working hours depend. So uh, for TMAT, you require a minimum of 24 and for AMAT, a minimum of just 18. Both of them uh, have a framework or better said, spoiler alert for, for what is coming next, also, TMED will have a similar framework as AMED has in terms of topics and what they mean. And for the follow-up, uh, the AMED is quite simple. The participants just have to fill the pre- and post-assessment forms and to uh, have the minimum attendance, and they, they are considered 
certified. Uh, TMET is a little bit more tricky. We have, uh, besides the assessment forms, we have the graduation training and the certification process, which is now more detailed uh, and stay tuned for the SCOMI CB regulations updates coming up next days. Uh, okay, and as oh sorry, uh, as Matilda has already gave you uh, some insight, uh, we have been working on uh, updating a bit on what would be uh, the TMET uh, workshop, uh, and we've been working with the TMET small working group. Uh, we have one of uh, the TMET small working group members here present, and he will talk um, later on. Uh, and why did we create this small working group? Uh, uh, basically, it went down to uh, uh, like a discussion that we had previously in uh, March meeting 2018, uh, where we discussed what is the purpose of teammates, uh, why were teammates created, and what uh, are teammates achieving so far. And there were a lot of different ideas in the room of should we uh, be uh, making facilitators and IFMSA trainers that are giving sessions uh, uh, throughout the world. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Are we empowering members? And uh, why why did we create this um, in the first place? Um, we tried to do the team at trainer status. That was the, the first thing uh, that we, we did. And we established uh, a previous small group uh, that discussed these questions. And uh, we kind of understood that the teammates, uh, the teammate trainers uh, uh, were not uh, doing, like a lot of teammate trainers were not doing, delivering teammate trainings afterwards, teammate training workshops. Were though, uh, uh, in their local committees or uh, in their national member organizations. So there was some kind of um, outcome that we weren't expecting, but uh, it was, even more powerful because it was exactly what we want from capacity building. We were empowering uh, members to take action at a local or at a, a national level uh, and sharing this medical education knowledge and sharing IFMSA in general. Uh, the picture that you have here is a really good example of that uh, because this is uh, a picture of a graduation um, of team at, uh, participants. And I think out of uh, the, besides the trainers that are here, uh, out of the, the participants that were in this team at workshop, only three of them actually gave one more workshop uh, of a uh, three-day training session of team at. Uh, but then you see people here that become uh, NMO presidents, treasurers uh, of their uh, NMOs. Uh, you see uh, no means you see uh, the former SCOFTI that then implemented the public health leadership training. Uh, so you, you see a lot of people that just like got this experience and did something else, uh, but have this experience as an old this experience uh, to heart as something that uh, they grew and uh, inspired them to continue in the student representation. So in terms of uh, what teammates can do, I think this is what teammates can do, is getting a group of people to do something um, else with this knowledge. Um, and I think uh, this is also what we wanted with the team at Small Working Group, was to find out, okay, so this is a training, so we need facilitation skills for sure, and we need to assure a certain level of facilitation skills, but what do we want after that? What do we want more? Uh, and I think, uh the be the best person to respond to that uh it will be halid to present the team at review uh, and the topic uh halid is from medicine sudan and is the team at small working group member that i mentioned to you okay uh, hello everyone thank you matilda uh hello everyone uh, my name is Khalid abbas and i'm uh, part of uh, team at small working group uh, today I'm uh, going to give you a quick review about what has been happening on our uh, small working group. What do we achieve so far on uh, SCOMI capacity building? Uh, 
Specifically, I'm going to talk about image review. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, as you see right now, the slide is really messy, and this is what basically happened on this small working group. Uh, we came with the new uh, ideas and new uh, guidelines for the Timit, and it will be the cornerstone for for the next Timit uh, workshops. Uh, so uh, we started uh, a lot of work, and now we we want your inputs to to develop it more. Okay, to start uh, with the Timit topics. Uh, now we have uh, uh, now ten small working. Uh, now we have ten. Uh, uh, Timet uh, mandatory topics and the uh, 10 mandatory topics is uh, uh, divided between uh, is uh, divided between uh, medical education topics which will be six mandatory medical education topics and the rest will be four soft skills uh, topics uh, for uh, the topics that we have been chosen to be a mandatory topics, uh, educational strategies, curriculum planning and development, teaching and learning, advocacy and student representation and involvement, uh, assessment and evaluation, quality assurance and accreditations. Uh, we see that uh, these topics are very important to uh, deliver during the TMIT and all uh, TMIT participants have to gain these topics uh, to uh, spread it as a future trainers. And we emphasize that on the importance of them. So that's why we make it a mandatory topics. Uh, for the uh, another uh, mandatory topics, which uh, on uh, the category of non-formal educations, which will be uh, facilitation skills, presentation and public speaking, session planning and designing, feedback, uh, briefing, debriefing, and reporting. Uh, now we are counting 10 mandatory topics uh, on uh, the teammate review that we are working on right, uh, right now. You would see that uh, all the participants must uh, attend 100% uh, of the mandatory topics. And this is uh, uh, one of the requirements for them. Uh, and it is very important like for all participants to, to gain what is the mandatory topics on teammate. Uh, then we have uh, the optional topics, the optional topics which uh, will be, uh, uh, we, we will give the trainers and the OC like the, uh, the to take decision what uh, optional topics they want to, to have. Uh, maybe some uh, SRTs or some workshop want a specific theme for them. So we, they can choose or the trainers want to, to add some optional topics according to the trainees' needs. So we have social accountability as an optional topics, global health workforce, global health education, research and medical education, evidence-based medicine, interprofessional education, medical ethics and professionalism and policy making as optional topics for uh, medical education topics. And uh, we have uh, intercultural learning and understanding as a soft skills, leadership, and personal development also as an optional topics. Of course, this is not all the optional topics that, but it is uh, one of the most common that we, we are delivering. Uh, now I'm going to move forward from the topic into the competency profile. Okay, what is competency profile? Uh, the competency profile, actually, we, we realized that we we had a lot of number of teammate trainers, but a lot of them active, and we want like to ensure the competencies and the uh, quality of of the trainers that we are graduated. So we make them that are up to challenge to to deliver uh, a teammate that is uh, uh, graduating uh, teammate trainers that spreading medical education worldwide with the full enthous enthusiasm. Okay, uh, so we categorize uh, the the TMIT, uh, uh, uh attendees into uh, TMIT participants. So we have certain competencies for TMIT participants and for SCOMI IFMC facilitator and then for TMIT trainers themselves. Uh, 
we we decided that the TMET participant uh, had to have a basic knowledge uh, about TMET, uh, and he have uh, two. Uh, the participant should uh, assist by the pre assessment, post assessment form, and uh, we we want from the participant to have basic uh, soft skills in facilitation and uh, motivation to facilitate the teammate training and eager to search for more topics for teammate. Uh, this is uh, the competencies that we want from the teammate participant. For, uh, for SCOMI IFMC facilitator, involvement in medical educations in local national levels and eager to improve within capacity building field and we want them to acknowledge the impact of medical education uh, has on the global level. Uh, for the teammate trainers, we want the, uh, motivated, uh, the motivations, we want the motivation, we, uh, and the other competencies is the discussion with the international team member uh, for specifically development assistance, uh, facilitate a teammate trainer alongside with already teammate trainers, so if uh, if you facilitate after you graduate from from teammate workshop, if you facilitate for a, a teammate workshop on site with uh, anyone who is already teammate trainers, now you have one of the competencies like to be a teammate trainers. Uh, the requirement, which is the uh, the the part that we had most of our discussions, because we we want like all the uh, IFMSA regions. To, to, to be represented on them and the, their voices have been re reflected on this. So the minimum at attendance of the hour we decided to be 85%. And uh, as I said earlier, that uh, all the mandatory topics must be attended 100% uh, in medical educations. Uh, and of course that uh, the graduation training would be like with the training graduation form. Uh, the follow-up of, of the team participants would be by both assessment form that they should uh, fill and uh, feedback from the trainers. And uh, they should do their graduation tra trainers, uh, their graduation training uh, no more than six months after the workshop. Uh, for the SCOMI IFMSA facilitator that they have the, fulfilled the follow-up criteria of the teammate participants. So it is uh, annual level, but you have to occupy first the competency of the teammate participants. Uh, complete minimum 15 hours of medical education sessions delivering at a local or a national level. Uh, submission of trainer portfolio that uh, included the one session design and uh, CV, uh, your CV and your uh, motivation letters. Uh, and finally, for the team trainers, uh, we want them to complete minimum 30 hours of medical education session delivering on the local and national levels uh, and experiencing uh, to facilitate six mandatory uh, uh, medical education uh, sessions. Because I, as I said earlier, we have 10 mandatory topics. Six of them is a medical education topics and the other four are non-formal education soft skills topic. Uh, this is just a quick review about the competency profile, which will be the new guideline regulation for for the timid participant and uh, IFMC facilitator and uh, timid trainers. Uh, so I want you to give us like uh, your input. Uh, you can approach us, you can approach Matilda, the SCOMI DA, uh, DA developmental assistant about this issue. Uh, finally, um, uh, also we we discuss about the learners' uh, characteristics, uh, which we are already uh, analyzed. That the teammate is is filling the gap uh, when you start as a teammate abl applicant into bec becoming a teammate trainers. Uh, so uh, so w when you start as a Ultimate applicants, uh, uh, you have uh, the, the learner characteristic that you must occupy that uh, expect to occupy with the knowledge, skills, and attitudes. 
and for a TMET uh, participant expected to develop skills in medical education, student representations, and we want you to be eager to, to, uh, to develop your skills. Uh, for the TMET trainers, uh, diverse level of knowledge in medical educations and non-formal education skills tend to relay on a smaller pool of topics. Uh, we want you also, the team trainers, to be specialized in, in some of the medical education topics. So when we have a team workshop, we're going to have uh, two or three trainers. Uh, these trainers will be specialized in each topic, so the participant will gain a lot of uh, benefits from specialized trainers or, or expert trainers in, in such different topics of medical education topics. Uh, this is a, a quick review or a quick journey in, into the TMET uh, review and uh, also we have uh, a BRI and uh, BOSS assessment forms, uh, BOSS assessment form which will be sent to the, all the TMET applicants uh, and they must uh, fulfill it. To, to, to be a TMED participant and uh, the follow-up for, for the TMED participant after the workshop will be by the BOSS assessment form. Uh, and then you go with the, the graduation training. Uh, this is a uh, wrap up about what has been happening in the small working group teammate for for the teammate review which will be the cornerstone so if if anyone now have any inputs or any ideas yes you'd go <coughs> the same highlight okay um any input or questions or thoughts What do you think about it? Like, I think we have a, a participant from from the smoking group. Okay, what else sh should be added, or uh, what would uh, you change? You can feel free to drop your um, questions or uh, answers or whatever you wish in the comments and we'll address them all at the end of the webinar. Yes, okay, um, okay guys, you can drop your question at the end of the webinar that we're gonna back and see what you have been raising, okay? Thank you, Khaled, for presenting uh, would the ultimate uh, small working group work so far. Um, and we'll be, we are looking forward to sharing like the proper documents with all those comedians uh, very, very, very soon. Uh, and hopefully approve them in August meeting. Um, now I give the word to Maru, the SCOMI general assistant, to tell us a bit about uh, the resources that we have. Yes, thank you, Katarina. And I think I have a little confession to make about the, one of the subtle purposes behind this webinar, which is I wanted to raise all uh, members' awareness about uh, what is the structure and what is the framework about the TMATs and all this uh, and aim at and uh, the general idea on how to organize the SCOBY workshop so we can all be uh, encouraged to maybe organize a SCOBY workshop, whether is it a team at or a name at, uh, now that you are uh, able to uh, organize and host uh, one of these on a local level. And um, as Katerina mentioned, one of the resources that um, we would uh, share with you these uh, 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 frameworks and documents is you can go through the SCOMI public folder and we have a dedicated folder for the SCOMI workshops where you can find uh, the SCOMI um, capacity building regulations that enlists all uh, the staffs and all um, um, I would say rules on uh, that you would need to follow so you can um, properly um, 
organize a, an IFMSA uh, certified SCOMI workshop. And um, you would find this uh, not only in the regulations, but also simplified posters in the how to organize folder. Um, there is also another interesting uh, folder that you would um, and need to be checking out regarding capacity building. And maybe I'm going now a little bit off topic regarding uh, the SCOMI workshops, but now I'm just discussing capacity building in SCOMI and resources that we use. And we thought it would be very useful for members uh, to have a folder dedicated to uh, just general medical education resources, but also the resources that we develop in IFMSA. So we, you can, so we can raise your knowledge about uh, medical education issues and uh, what we do in IFMSA. Uh, so we, so we can um, uh, be involved in solving these issues. And there's uh, the folder called Useful Resources that you would be needed to check it out. So you can uh, see, for example, the manuals that we developed in IFMSA, um, such as, for example, public health in the medical curriculum toolkit that we have developed last year um, uh, in collaboration with SCOF. So you can see how you can approach public health in your medical curriculum and know about this topic um, and maybe also share it throughout the session or um, or maybe even a webinar in your LMO, um, or for example, the social accountability toolkit um, that has not only a manual that um, that details the uh, the concept of social accountability in medical schools, but also uh, the social accountability small working group from last year. They developed different uh, tools. For for example, a trainer's handout. Um, where you can, for example, organize a session about social accountability in your NMO, uh, and also a PowerPoint presentation that you can find there as well. Um, there's another interesting folder that you would need to check, which is the content-based resources. And uh, this uh, folder has um, a multitude of other subfolders, and uh, they are uh, organized uh, uh, based on uh, a topic. So you would find, for example, articles and uh, documents that talk about um, a specific topic, topic uh, in medical education. And uh, for example, if we talk about curriculum development or faculty development or any other topic that would interest medical education, you can check um, uh, that folder, uh, so you can uh, raise your knowledge, and maybe you would use th these documents to, so you can organize your sessions uh, in medical education. Um, and yes, um, as we open uh, time for questions in this webinar, may, I would also uh, would like to know from you, uh, and you can drop it in the comments section. Um, uh, what other type of documents that you would like to find in the SCOMI public folder, and what would be interesting more for you so you can read about or maybe what are the different uh, topics that you want us to include in the content-based resources. Or even, for example, you can uh, send us directly uh, either uh, to Matilda or to myself uh, some interesting articles that, about medical education that you have or some interesting handouts about training sessions that you had, um, whatever. Uh, you have uh, would be good for sharing medical education because, as Matilda said, sharing is caring. And yeah, I, I believe that's it for the resources. Um, uh, Matilda was about to share with us one interesting resource that we are working on. And Matilda, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Maru. Uh, so, speaking of manuals and toolkits, the much wanted and most desired CB toolkit, which is our own SCOMI CB toolkit, will be launched really soon. So, we hope that from the moment uh, it will be on air, everyone will ace at organizing its own workshop. So, to offer you a glimpse of what the toolkit will contain, here are the main sections of it. We have the introduction to CB in SCOMI, which will basically talk about history of CB in our committee and what is CB per se. Then we'll have uh, some administrative uh, steps in how to organize a SCOMI workshop, 
meaning how to organize uh, your agenda, how to take care of the logistical part, like um, materials or resources or, or room, how to settle your goals, uh, how to uh, pick your participants, how to work with your facilitators, and of course, the processes for TMET and IMET workshops, like approval, follow-up, uh, the ongoing sessions, and so on. Then we'll, we'll have a joint section on the, the AMET and TMET topics to emphasize on their objectives and what do they mean, so you, you know what topic to add in your agenda based on your own needs. And these are actually, I think, my favorite parts, the assessment and evaluation techniques, where we are looking forward on presenting different tools and ways in which you can evaluate your session or your participants or even your co-facilitators, depending on the context and on what your final goals are. Uh, then we have the frequently encountered issues, which is a very interesting section because here we'll try to cover any situation that can uh, jeopardize a workshop or that can just cause a delay in uh, some sessions or in the process itself, or even some very often met situations, for example, what do you do if uh, a participant doesn't answer your messages anymore, or if he skips more than the um, one session or everything, and testimonials. Uh, as you've probably seen on the FMSA team at Facebook group, we are looking forward in finding out how this how did this workshop contribute to in creating leadership skills in our members so we really much appreciate your input and you still have time to answer the question posted on that group which is how did TMAT help you change your medical education system because as we've said in the beginning and as Maru emphasized, sharing is caring. So if, you don't, if we don't share from our own experiences, uh, maybe other people won't, or other new trainers won't know exactly what path to follow. And um, you can also drop your, uh, your comments on maybe your ideas you have on what else should be added or what would you change in the outlines that we currently have in the toolkit or any questions you might have regarding this document. And now I will uh, give the floor to Obada, the SCOMI Regional Assistant for Yemar. Thank you, Matilda. Uh, okay, next. Okay, so we came to the part where uh, we have two things that we need to discuss. First of all, which is the communication between uh, you, the trainers, the workshop, the organizers, uh, everyone basically with the SCOMI ID. And you know that uh, if you have any questions or regards um, with the capacity building, uh, workshop team at email and so on, you can always contact uh, through the email our development assistant uh, on the email uh, da.scomi at uh, However, we have also, we want uh, the communication and collaboration between, between us and between uh, the trainers worldwide. Uh, which is why we have a couple of ways. Uh, one of them is the Facebook group. Uh, you can follow it on uh, the Facebook. You can find it FMSA Capacity Building, FMSA Training Medical Education Trainers. Uh, these uh, two official groups where you're going to find uh, all the newly graduate, the old experience, uh, everyone uh, there where you can share and discuss more uh, about the trainings. 
Uh, also, if you if the two above they have failed you, hopefully not, because I can assure you that will not happen. You can always contact your SCOMI region assistant for that reason and the region assistant for capacity building if you still have any questions. Uh, we want uh, next and next. Okay, so I oh, know, good, go back. <laughs> okay, don't forget. What do you like about this pathway? What do you dislike? Uh, how do you empower your members locally? Uh, make sure to give us these answers uh, below in the comments. I know we have been saying drop your comments, but bear with us, we have lots of info. Next. Okay. We have thought of this idea, and I'm sure uh, you all have seen it on the Facebook group uh, by our development assistant, which is the team at the trainer body system. Uh, basically, the team at the trainer body system uh, have been created so we could increase the collaboration. Always we have this idea that we uh, graduated. Okay, now what? We still lacking that vision of experience. We still need to develop more about our sessions and so on. We need some support or help. Uh, and this is usually where we bring uh, all the trainers uh, together uh, in one system. So they strengthen their community. They can have better follow-up and better progression on developing their session and their activity as well. Uh, not only just to graduate and sit by home, but also to graduate and to go uh, educate those and empower, uh, as Catalina have said in the beginning. Uh, how we are going to do that? We are going to match you to match experienced people with the newly graduate ones. And this is going to happen uh, in a ratio of one to three. One experienced team trainer with the three newly graduate, uh, they can have uh, still follow up on the activities, they can facilitate workshops together, uh, they can create material, facilitate skills, and so on and so on. So the question comes now. Uh, do you, do, if you want to join uh, this training by the system, make sure uh, to contact our development assistant uh, on the email uh, or the Facebook group, Facebook as well, uh, to find out more. And if there is anything to be added, um, there is going to be with Matilda, our development assistant. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Ovada. And you've actually mentioned the key word, which is journey. So our medical education journey is far from ending. So uh, we have a new upcoming team at workshops in Istanbul, starting actually in two days, and in uh, Iraq in September. And new aim at workshops in uh, Taiwan for the pre-GA, in Lithuania at the end of August, and in uh, lovely Porto, Portugal at the uh, beginning of September. And the good news is that if you can click, please, uh, the call for um, team at workshop in Mesopotamia was just um, um, recently shared and you still can register as trainers or participants until uh, 5th of July. One more click, please. So if you still didn't uh, get the chance to become a team trainer, then I think Mesopotamia is waiting for you. And uh, stay tuned for other um, for another newly um, team at workshop that will be announced very soon. If somebody from my uh, colleagues wants to add anything more. If not, um, i like to thank you, first of all, um, to those who attended this webinar. And I see that we have a question from Christopher Mena. 
maybe it could be added some tips about engagement with participants. Uh, if you can elaborate a little bit more on that. As for um, engagement with participants, uh, depending how you see this, we are trying to cover this somehow in the section of um, testimonials. And um, because basically this is a journey that we all took together and a testimonial is based on experiences that we shared with other team trainers or participants or so. And um, I think for me, I add one more thing. It would be also to, uh, I think the capacity building team uh, is working on a facilitation uh, in trainings toolkit. And uh, this is one of the ways that we um, uh, we would help uh, the trainers in IFMSA um, brush up their um, facilitation methods so we, they would be more engaged with participants uh, during sessions and workshops. I hope this is uh, answering your question to start. Christopher has uh, clarified as well, like he meant it testimonials or tips about it. Uh, uh, we could work on that because we're still collecting testimonials. Uh, but if you have a, a, any idea uh, on how you would like to see that come to light, uh, please let us know. Um, but, but I think we could definitely work on something. Yeah, and in any case, all of the documents we are working on uh, will be added in the SCOMI public folder. We are not keeping anything secret, so um, that's a thing. But yeah, if you want to help us in any way, you, we are, you are really welcome. Welcome. I think that uh, as there are no further questions in the comments, we maybe wrap up uh, this uh, webinar. Um, I think we should wait. This is very scary. OK. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, yeah, we should thank everyone who is here uh, joining the webinar now. Uh, but if you are watching it later, uh, we also appreciate comments and you can email us, uh, Matilda has put her DA email, uh, or you can just comment on the, on the video. Um, and besides that, we'll just, uh, I just should thank uh, Obada, Maru, Matilda and Hadid for being here and for presenting a bit of this comic capacity building. Today we talked a bit more point about the team at small working group because this is something that we've been working on very hard as well as the uh, SCOMI public folder. Uh, there are more opportunities. I hope that uh, with the SCOMI capacity building toolkit we will share some with you uh, and uh, certainly there are more ideas that we can develop as Christopher has just gave us one more idea uh, and any of you can give us uh, any ideas. So um, are there any comments from uh, the presenters uh, of the webinar right now? Mm. No, also no comments. So thank you all for joining and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. So keep up with the SCOMI Facebook group and the SCOMI servers and we will let you know when that will be happening. 
Uh, bye and have a nice Sunday, everyone.